We looked at controllers in the last tutorial and uh, we realized that in order to create a controller there were a bunch of different steps we need to do. The thing about a controller is you basically use it to set up data for the view. So you prepare the data in the controller and access it in the view. So ideally what you would like to do is access the scope in the controller so that you can put things on it and then use it in the view. We already know how to access uh, data from the scope. We have the ng bind, we have the double curlies, you can also use the ng if to get data from the scope. So what we want to do is use a controller to put data into the scope. What we did with ng in it, we created a variable called out of day, right? We created a property of the scope and assigned a value nine to it. What we'd like to do is to do the same thing, but not an ng in it. We need to do it in the controller. Now, can I remove this? Let's say I take this out and I remove ng in it. I don't want to do this anymore, right? It's just the body. And I want to add this logic over here. Can I do this? Well, this will not work. Can you guess why? The reason is when we are accessing R of day here, like I've already mentioned, we are not just accessing any R of day variable. We are accessing the variable of the scope. So when we are setting the value over here, what we should also do is set the property of the scope object, not just any var R of the day. That will not work. What we need to do is be able to say scope dot R of day. We need to get the scope object somehow and then set the property on it. Now, how do you get the scope object from a controller method? You know that we can run any arbitrary method and then have Angular execute it, right? We executed a console log statement, but now we want to execute other logic, which actually puts data on the scope. How do we get that scope object? Could we do something like this? var scope equals Angular dot get scope, right? We did Angular dot module to create a new module. Can we ask our friendly Angular object to say, hey, Angular, get me the scope. We get the scope object, and then now you do scope dot R of day. Would this work? Well, if this method existed, it would definitely work. But fortunately or unfortunately, you do not have Angular dot get scope, right? The Angular object does not have a get scope method. This is not how you get the scope object. The reason this doesn't exist is because what we're doing here is a lookup. Uh, what is a lookup? A lookup is basically using an API to actually fetch something. You are basically looking up the scope from a Angular API. So this API does not exist because lookups are bad. What we should do instead is a common pattern called dependency injection. Dependency injection is a way in which you can have the things that you need given to you rather than you manually looking it up. It's a pretty popular concept in a lot of uh, server-side programming uh, frameworks and it's kind of making its way into client-side programming frameworks as well. Uh, I'll give you an example to kind of illustrate the concept of dependency injection. If you're already familiar with dependency injection using any of these other frameworks, you might want to skip a couple of minutes in this video, but I'm just going to try and exam explain dependency injection with a very simple example. So uh, I attended this uh, dev conference a few, uh, a couple of years back, and uh, this was a fairly popular development conference. And I was one of the thousands of attendees who went there. And uh, they, they had like a day long uh, set of sessions and they provided lunch and breakfast and all that stuff. So the way lunch worked was, you know, during lunchtime, the talk would end and then people would make their way to uh, the cafeteria where different lunches were provided. Uh, I happen to be a vegetarian, so I ha I was seeking vegetarian food. So they had different uh, sets of boxes. There were some vegetarian boxes, there were some with meat, the, you know, all kinds of food that was available there. So I actually sought uh, the vegetarian boxes and there, was, there were different lines for all of them. So what ended up happening was since they couldn't really plan out, uh, you know, how many people needed what different types of food, uh, some of the food would run out. Either the vegetarian boxes would run out or the non-vegetarian boxes would run out. So people weren't really getting what they wanted uh, all the time. Most of the time, yes, but not all the time. So what they did the next day was they kind of sent out a survey where uh, we had to fill what our dietary requirements were, right? So I had to just uh, open the web page and then choose my dietary preference. And I chose vegetarian, other people chose different dietary preferences. So what they did uh, in the next day uh, during lunchtime was they didn't really have people go and 
get their food that they needed, they already knew what each person wanted. So they actually came to uh, our tables, you know, where we were sitting, and then they actually provided the boxes for us, right? They already had the information. Everybody had told them what they wanted. So they had the ability to kind of plan ahead of time, make sure everybody got what they wanted. And rather than the conference attendees looking up for the food, the food was actually supplied to the conference attendees, right? So that way they, the organizers were able to plan better and the people who were attending got the food that they wanted. This is dependency injection in practice, all right? So look at what happened. The first day, people were actually doing lookups. People were looking for the food that they wanted. Uh, they wanted vegetarian food, they wanted vegan food. So they were actually looking for things that they needed. That was not efficient because there's no way the conference organizers could know what each individual person wanted. However, in day two, the lookup did not happen. The individual conference attendees had to declare what they wanted, right? They didn't look it up. They just declared the need for the food, right? A vegetarian would declare that they are, uh, they are vegetarian. They needed vegetarian food, right? A meat eater would say, okay, I need non-vegetarian food. So each person would declare what they wanted. And the conference organizers got that information, they planned ahead, and they supplied what each individual person needed, right? So the dependency was injected, the dependency was provided. It was the other way around, right? It's kind of like the Hollywood principle, don't call us, people call you. It's kind of like that. So the conference attendees weren't looking for food, they were supplied it. All right, so let's apply that kind of a concept in this in this situation. So what we're doing here by saying, hey, Angular, get me the scope, is basically doing a lookup, right? It's like we are having to go get the scope. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say var scope, and we have some kind of an indicator which says, hey, Angular, get me the scope object here, right? Some kind of a declaration to Angular and say, hey, populate the scope over here and I'm going to use this, right? The way to do this, well, of course, you cannot have a var here and expect it to automatically be filled. What you do instead is define it as a method argument. Define it as a method argument. Who's calling this method? Angular is calling the method. So you're basically saying, hey, Angular, when you're calling this method, pass it as a method argument. Get the scope and pass it here so that I can use it to populate anything I want, and Angular is gonna do this. The way to tell Angular to pass this in is by having a special token in the method argument to somehow tell Angular that this is what you need, right? You, you wanna tell it that it needs the scope, the scope object, not any, uh, you know, this is not an ordinary variable called scope, it is the scope that comes with Angular. In order to do this, you have a special convention, which is the dollar scope, right? As long as you have the token, the dollar scope as an argument of this method, Angular is going to automatically inject this value when it's calling main, right? You have ng controller, this main controller, Angular is going to look this up, look up this function, now it sees the function and it says this function has a dollar scope as the argument. But what it's going to do is before calling this function, it's going to go fetch the scope and pass it to this method execution. Now that Angular is passed it, all I need to do is to take this dollar scope which is gonna contain the scope object and then use it to populate whatever I need. Here it happens to be R of day. So I'm gonna set the value of nine to this thing. And now with this, we have pretty much, we have pretty much done the exact same thing that the ng init did. With ng init, you didn't have to do a scope dot because that's the default when you're doing things in the template like you see here, you didn't have to do a scope dot R of day. However, when you're doing something similar in the controller, this is all JavaScript, so you're gonna have to be a bit more explicit in what the object is gonna be. So you need to specify the scope. How do you get the scope? You just declare it as dollar $scope in your controller, and then Angular is gonna pass that in when it executes the controller, and now you populate it. All right, so let's save this and make sure this works. Never to reload, well, it still works. Now let me change this to 18 and make sure this says good evening. Reload. Well, it says good evening, the hour of the day is 18. I didn't have to change any of these because they were still referring to the scope. All I had to do is change the place that it was getting added to the scope and now that's in 
the controller, right? So hopefully this made sense. This is dependency injection and how to set the model in your controller so that you can use it later in the view.